Well, good morning, YouTube. <clears throat> Last week I left you hanging with some uh, equipment failure. This week we have resolved the equipment failures. We got some new tips for the welder. Uh, Midweek I uh, tried it out. I uh, finished welding these pieces in. Everything's in there nice and tight. No need to clean those welds up, they look pretty good. Just gonna buff them and uh, go right over them with the epoxy. Uh, I had another failure, I had a sander quit on me, so we had to instigate another sander. But uh, that's where we left off, we were welding on the front end there, so I did finish some of that off. Uh, the other thing I worked on last night was I uh, decided to repair these headers. If you recall back in the beginning of the video process there, I had to actually cut a section out of the header because the suspension runs through here, the uh, drag link and the either arm, or what do you, yeah, the either arms and pitman arm and all that run through that hole. I thought that was the silliest thing I've ever seen, but that's just the way it is. And they also tend to, uh, they tend to scuff on the bottom, so what I had done was I, uh, I heated it up and straightened them out and uh, had to put a little weld in because I cut, what I did is I cut a slit so that I could put a, a steel bar in there and I heated this all up and pushed it out with the steel bar and then welded up the hole. So those are going to go out and get uh, sandblasted and powder coated. A uh, couple hundred bucks versus a uh, couple thousand bucks to get new headers. Uh, so I think we're going to go with the uh, recoding of the headers and put that difference of money into something else. So uh, today I would like to get this finish buttoned up and then start getting the skirts in there. I want to get this together enough that I can try and put the hood on because I don't want to commit to welding the inner fenders until I have the hood on and I, I know that I'm happy with that. So that might be a lengthy process. I have to do a little bit of surgery on my uh, Dynacor uh, rad support because it wasn't available for the size rad that I've got. I don't want to go and get a bigger rad for it. It's just a small block. So I'm going to section a piece out of the old one into the new one so that I have the distance right for the new rad. You can see the difference there. The uh, the old small block rad was like that. This is set up, I guess, for a, a different rad. Which is fine. I don't care. Uh, this won't be anything nobody's going to criticize me on, I hope. But, uh, yeah, I know the numbers that are in the rad cradle are important. I won't ever get rid of that. It's stamped, but, I mean, good lord. You'd have to... Uh, really be serious about repairing something. This is all full of Bondo. It's all rotten. This car took some kind of a major hit in the front corner and somebody had pulled this all out and straightened it. But that's why I decided not to reuse it. Because I just don't think it would ever look the same. Would have been more filler in it than anything else. So moving on, I'm just babbling. We got the heat cooking here. Got a late start, so gave the garage floor a quick sweep so I don't trip and kill myself. I'm going to finish up the welding on this and uh, try and finish up the bodywork on the firewall there so I can start welding the inner fenders on. See ya. Okay, so the surgery is midway here. What I've done is I have taken the section out of the original rad support. Came out okay, drilled out the spot welds until I got to this area where somebody, in their infinite wisdom, laid a patch over top. Uh, like I was showing you before in the uh, all the inners were just somebody lined the whole thing with new sheet metal which smoothed out everything, covered all the holes, but uh, there's some original paint. But uh, I need to get this off without wrecking this. So I'm working on the weld here. 
uh, what I've done so far is I've cut just behind the weld and I'm just taking a pair of vice grips and I'm going to back and forth kind of like a pop can. You, see, you can see it coming apart there now. I'll just kind of I get the bigger piece out of the way and then I can uh, get in there with a grinder and smooth it down. I don't need all of this so this rust back in here doesn't bother me so much. I'm probably just going to I'm going to use some of these original holes here to align it with the other panel and then uh, you know do a butt weld in there and make it look like it was meant to be. Moving on. Take okay, it back to work. Let's talk more work. Okay, Frankenstein's coming along just nicely now. I think, uh, like I say, uh, somebody was asking about uh, cutting patches. Uh, this is how I do it, for sure. I mean, I will, I'll concentrate on my straight line first. You know, I'll grind down where it's a little tight until I close up all my gaps. And then that's what I've more or less done there now. I can close that up a little bit more. But then I will concentrate on this where, I, where it overlaps. I lay it on top, then I'll cut that, and then I'll cut that so that I have a nice continuous line. You can't mess it up that way. And then I'll throw a couple tacks on it and then carry on. Hopefully when that's all said and done, you'll never know I did it. Cool. Okay, so this is going to be my attempt to show you my plenishing hammer. Now, I don't know if you may be able to see this or not, but obviously I've welded that together. And uh, the weld, obviously, no matter how careful you are, I got a little bit of a, a wow going on here. But I should be able to straighten it out with that. So bear with me and let's see if it works. Pressure shuts off. I'll pause and come back. So I believe we're back now. Pressure's done. So that's the end result. Let's zoom back out here. So what I've done, more or less, if you've been following along, I took out about that much of the new uh, piece and grafted in. The old one. So now I can put the old rad back in it. Pretty good stuff. Yep, so as you saw what I did there, I, I butt welded that together. It gave me a little bit of heat warpage there. I put it in the plunishing hammer thingy that uh, Harbor Freight or Princess Auto. Straightened it out relatively close. Uh, other people like Mr. Heavy Chevy, he'll throw his uh, one of his kids underneath to hold the dolly and he'll hammer it from above. I don't have that sort of help, so I have to use my one arm punishing hammer there. Anyways, enough about that. We got to get more done this week than just a uh, rad support. So lots more to go. See ya. Well, here's my view this morning. Finally got a few pieces 
on that make me happy. So, uh, I've been doing some calculating and some measuring, and uh, I should end up with a quarter inch gap on either side here. So obviously the front is non-negotiable because of this, so I've got to make the back the same. Uh, then I just went off of the doors, brought it in to the same distance in there. So theoretically the hood should fit, in theory. But the hood's over there. And Mr. Shaker and I are not exactly going to be able to put that back together by myself because of the weight of that. It's a steel hood, not a fiberglass hood. And that would just dent it and drop it and scratch it. And I've done enough of that denting and dropping and scratching stuff already. So I think I'm going to go on the premise that, yeah, it'll fit. <laughs> Boy. Don't you want to be there when I go to fit it and it doesn't fit? I will put it on long before I do any painting, so don't worry about that. I will be able to uh, adjust gaps pretty good, I think. I got a little bit of play there. I'm happy with that. The door still needs to come off and go back on again, so it'll start all over again lining that up. Uh, fenders, though, pretty good. Uh, inner stuff uh, is a little tight in some corners here and there. Both of these frame rails have been off, so it's not like uh, everything's 100%. I might have to trim the sheet metal there just a bit so it doesn't rub, just so I can tuck it in nice and tight before I weld it. That's about it for now. Uh, I'm going to throw some self-tappers in here or there once I'm happy with everything, so I can start taking it apart a little bit at a time. And... Uh, Weld. The only thing we got welded right now are the frame rails. Yeah, I like to throw everything in it if I could to make sure it fits first, but there's only so much you can put together with vice grips. Okay, Sunday morning. See ya. Alright, cross your fingers. We're gonna fire up the welder. Uh, I can't tweak it any more than I got it now. Um, right now I've created a nice square box. I've got the same distance from there to there, from there to here, from there to there, and so on and so forth. So I guess in theory, I, I would hope that's how they built it, that it's a nice square box, equally parallel. Hopefully that makes sense. And it stays that way when I'm done. All right, let's get to welding. This car ain't gonna build itself. See ya. Just give you a little look inside here before I go. Yeah. There we go. Gotta go. See ya. Well, we're committed now. Or should we be committed? No turn them back now unless you want to tear it all apart again. She's all stitched in there, stitched in there. All the way along. 100% stitched. I'm putting that lower rad cradle. I'm not sure what you call it in now. That's uh, a little bit of a bugger. I kind of wish I didn't put it in because it's a lot easier to get in and out of there, but I want to get all the welding done and start priming. Uh, that's the last bit of welding I gotta do on the front here, I think. And then I can uh, finish uh, priming everything, get it all stripped down, get the e-coat off and get her in some epoxy. That's my goal for today. So a big coat of epoxy on this whole nose and walk away. See ya. Well, well, well. Oh, I don't know what it is. About 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to turn the radio down before YouTube gets upset. There's the carnage. Clamps everywhere. Uh, she's all welded in. Every last stitch I could think of. I've ground down all my welds. I've gone ahead and I have knocked down the E-coat with 80 grit. 
I've detailed as much as I can on the uh, firewall. I'm just blind on that firewall. It needs primer so I can see where I'm at. But uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to put the whole thing in epoxy now. We've got a nice square chassis. She's all welded tight, as I've said a thousand times, because I'm repeating myself due to lack of sleep. So there you go. It's prime time. Bring you back when it's all... Well, got to clean up a little bit first. When it's all... In one color. Prime time is over. Sunday. Project CUDA 21, maybe? 20? I leave it up to you guys to keep track. Get your little light here. better. Now you can see what I've been doing. Because it's been in the shadows. And I don't always show you everything. Because sometimes I don't want you to see the weld jobs I'm doing. Or the, the bondo I'm putting in. Or the grinding, the sanding. But there's where we uh, grafted in that uh, old to the new there to make the rod support the uh, same as it was. When you get it all in one color, it still does look a lot better. The inner fender wells, of course they were new. Just the uh, welds that I uh, got along there. may have to dress some of them up after I sand it down. Firewall is looking pretty stock. Nothing going on there that's uh, unusual. We're not going to be filling a bunch of holes or anything because, as far as I can tell, most of those holes are needed to hold things. Uh, I will have to go through some of my old pictures. If there's some things there that don't need to be there, I'll uh, block them out. But uh, pretty much everything's going to have something in it by the time we're done. So there you go, guys. Sunday. Oh, February something or other. Have a good one, guys. Get this uploaded. Go watch some NASCAR if I'm not too late. Probably missed it by now. See ya.